Shalom. Our Torah portion this week is Achremot Kedushim. This is one of those years in which we combine certain Torah portions. Some years we need to spread out our Torah readings and some years we need to condense them. Well, this is one of those years in which we combine the Torah portions and so Achremot Kedushim are together. Now, Kedushim is one of the most glorious, one of the most uh, useful, I would say, practic in a practical sense, one of the most useful of the Torah portions. There are many ethical and moral precepts that you uh, can use in your everyday life. Uh, there, are, uh, there are laws that tell us how to be ethical in our business relationships with each other. Uh, there are laws regarding how we should treat each other in our community. Uh, there are certain laws about uh, ritual practices. There are also laws regarding our intimate relationships, that is, our sexual relationships with each other. Now, um, I, as I said, many of the laws found in Kedoshim uh, are are, are so applicable nowadays. For example, it says, you shall not stand idle while your neighbor bleeds. What a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful law that is. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. This speaks of, of caring about uh, the guy next door. And actually it says to love yourself. Lo you love the other guy. You have to love yourself. There's so many interpretations and applications of these laws. But when we get to chapter 20 of the book of Leviticus, we come across one law in particular uh, that many of us find rather disturbing in this day and age. Let's take a look at Leviticus chapter 20, verse 13. The Isha Sher Yishkav et Zachar Mishkave Isha To Iva Asu Shnehem Mot Yumatu Damehem Bam. If a man lies with a male as one lies with a woman, the two of them have done an abhorrent thing. They shall be put to death, and they retain the blood guilt. Now this is one of the most quoted passages in the Bible, quoted by people who are against uh, gay marriage. They point to this, this passage in the Bible and they say even God is against homosexuality to the point of making it uh, a, a capital crime. But what people who use this verse in this way fail to recognize is that there are many passages in the Torah that call for the death penalty that uh, we would, uh, that we would, in our day and age, would say that's totally inappropriate. For example, start a fire even for a, a barbecue on Saturday afternoon or on the Sabbath, guess what? Capital punishment. Uh, a couple suspected of, uh, of adultery, you'd say, capital punishment. It says it there in the Bible. If you disrespect your parents, if you speak in a disrespectful manner to your mother and father, guess what? Capital punishment. No one in any of the major branches uh, of religions based on the Bible would suggest that these are capital punishments today. Now, this goes to the very uh, to the very question of how do we relate to the Bible? Do we see the Bible as the inerrant word of God, spoken in one place, in one, at one time, for all time? Or do we understand the Bible in a different manner? There are those who say that we have to understand the Bible literally. It was given to us, the Torah was given to us a little over 3,000 years ago, and that's the end of the matter. There are those of us who look at the Bible a little differently. We see the Bible as not the inerrant Word of God, but a conversation, a conversation between God and the Jewish people, between God and humanity. Now, God is perfect. God 
speaks words and her somehow communicates to us. I don't know whether God actually speaks words, but God communicates to us in an eternal fashion, uh, in ways uh, that, uh, in wisdom that is applicable for all time. But we human beings, our ancestors included, are flawed beings. We hear, we interpret, we write things down. Now, God is perfect, human beings aren't. Every generation lives in its own time, in its own place, with its own set of challenges and sensibilities. And, and God's word is open to interpretation. You probably had the experience of witnessing an event with other people. You see something happening, you see it in a certain way. The, the guy standing beside you, he's got a different interpretation. The woman over there sees it from a somewhat different angle. Her understanding of what happened is different. And so it is with the Bible. Each one of us has a different interpretation. Every generation might see it in a somewhat different way. My understanding of our Jewish tradition is this, uh, that Judaism is an evolving tradition. Uh, that Judaism understands that the conversation between, uh, between us and God is ongoing. And that our understanding of, word, of God's word, of God's instruction to us, is, uh, might not be exactly the same as uh, it was for our ancestors. With the issue of homosexuality, for example, homosexuality was a frightening phenomenon for our ancestors. They saw it as aberrant, something sick, as something that had to be rooted out. Some of, some of them may have seen it as a choice that somehow gay people choose to be gay, and somehow uh, gay people were morally um, morally flawed. Well, we've come to realize that none of that is true in our day and age. People do not choose their sexual orientation. Straight people and gay people are born that way. Uh, and we have come to realize uh, that gay people can be, uh, can be in committed, monogamous, loving relationships. And that, that we've come also to realize, scientists have said, that there really is, uh, there really is no moral or, uh, or, or, or physical um, uh, defect in gay people. That it is natural that a small percentage of people in our society will be gay and lesbian. And Judaism being an evolving, inclusive, and embracing and loving and tolerant uh, tradition as uh, in the modern times most Jews have come to realize that that particular passage in the Bible was was right maybe 3,000 years ago but not today and I'm proud that uh, Reform Judaism has been speaking out against discrimination uh, against uh, um, uh, gay and lesbian people from as early as 1965. And uh, we, we now uh, ordain gay and lesbian cantors and rabbis, and we welcome them into our congregations. Now, in a few days, the Supreme Court of the United States is going to take up uh, the constitutionality of those bans in certain states against gay and lesbian weddings and marriages. Well, I hope that they will do the right thing. And uh, I do know uh, that in the progressive Jewish community, we are hoping and praying that they do. Well, I hope that you will read this week's Torah portion and come to your own conclusion. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you.